a uh, pretty familiar recipe to these presentations. Uh, so a bit of a snapshot on us, I'll explain a bit about our history and who we are and what we do, uh, where we see the opportunities, uh, our blueprint for growth and some of the progress that we've made so far this year. Uh, so as most of you will know, Turner's has been known as a, as a very traditional auction house uh, for used vehicles. It's, it's, it's what we've uh, grown up uh, primarily doing. Uh, but we are a business that, that has become much more than that and is becoming uh, much more than that. And really our vision for this business is about transitioning it from a very much a bricks and mortar operation uh, to one uh, that is based on a very much an online marketing operation uh, and transitioning from a focus on wholesale or trade customers into a very much a focus on, on retail consumers. And in simple terms, uh, we are becoming a multi-channel uh, retail business. Uh, just a bit of a snapshot on, on us as an organisation. Uh, obviously we are a market leader in the, in the used vehicle markets in New Zealand, uh, but we think we've got a great growth story, uh, particularly with this new multi-channel approach that we're taking. Uh, we've been around for a, <laughs> quite a long time, as you can see. Uh, we were a, a, a division or a function of Turners and Growers, and they listed us, or IPO'd us on, uh, on the NZX in 2002. We employ just over 300 New Zealanders uh, right around the country, from Dunedin up to Whangarei. Uh, and last year we uh, produced an impact of 4.2 million, of which 97% of that was paid out uh, through, that, through that dividend there. Uh, in terms of sort of our makeup, uh, we are currently trading at around 240, I think. Uh, on Friday, we announced to the market that we were going to be ahead of last year's profit, uh, which gave us a little, little spike in the share price, which was good. Uh, in terms of our share register, our two major shareholders, Bartel Holdings uh, in Dorchester Pacific. Bartel are a cornerstone shareholder out of Turners and Growers, so they've been a, been a shareholder for a long time. Uh, they're represented by the chairman, Michael Dosser, and uh, Dorchester Pacific, who bought in uh, to the company this year, uh, who own just under 20%. Uh, we have around uh, 1,500 shareholders on the register. Uh, very capable and experienced group of directors. Uh, Michael is on the board of Turners and Growers as well. Uh, Grant uh, from Cordamenta. Uh, Denim is a very well-known uh, director, and uh, Paul, who represents uh, Dorchester as well. So these guys have been, uh, <laughs> I'd have to say, very involved uh, in the development of our, of our new strategy and direction, uh, which, is, which is great to see. In terms of our organisation and how we, how we look at it, there's, there's three key components that I, that I want to explain and talk to you about. Uh, the auctions segment is the, effectively the, the operations and logistics of selling things on behalf of, of our vendor customers or, or our sellers. Uh, and you can see there some of the clients that we, that we deal with, so big vehicle leasing companies, rental car companies, big government departments, organisations that have, have big fleets of vehicles that we are their, their infrastructure. Uh, we also deal a lot with uh, car dealers, car traders, uh, insurance companies, finance companies, uh, receivers and liquidators. So across that auctions business we are selling used vehicles, damaged vehicles, or end of life vehicles, trucks and machinery, plant and equipment and just about anything else that one of these customers will give to us to sell. Uh, fleet, the fleet division is, uh, is our trading division, so that's where we become a customer almost to our own process. So we take a principal risk position, we'll actually purchase, uh, purchase product to, to put through that auctions business. Uh, mostly that is vehicles today, so we import around 2,000 vehicles from Japan, uh, and this year we'll buy probably around 6,000 vehicles domestically as well. So uh, roughly about uh, sort of 8,000 and, and increasing in terms of what we're buying from, it, from that vehicle point of view. And then the last area is the, is the finance business, uh, that we lend money to people to buy cars through our, through our process. And that is, a, that is a very exciting part of the, of the future of Turner's Auctions. Uh, and currently today we partner with a Dunedin-based organisation, MTF, who, uh, who we're a dealer cooperative 
uh, and we use those guys for funding and, and the systems that we uh, use to run that, that finance book. All that lending is done on a recourse basis, so we take the risk, we decide who we lend to, and consequently we earn a, a good margin because of, because of that risk as well. Uh, here's, here's just some of the brands uh, of the organisations that we deal with. Uh, so as you can see there, uh, very well recognised, reputable companies uh, that, that we are proud to have in our customer portfolio. Some of these customers have been uh, with us for a very long time and, and I would say that uh, long term partnerships, particularly from a customer point of view, is something that we absolutely believe in and, and value highly. Uh, and I just wanted to give you just a sort of quick sense into uh, a couple of these, so, so what we do for them. Uh, so Lease Plan, who are one of, uh, one of the biggest vehicle leasing companies in New Zealand, uh, when, when they lease a car to a customer, when that, when that lease comes to its end, it's, that's the point that we step in. So from the moment that that lease terminates, we effectively take control of that process from the time their driver drops that car off to the time we deposit money into their bank account from the proceeds of that sale and everything everything in between. Uh, and pretty much the same for someone like AA Insurance as well. So when one of their customers has a, has a car accident and they make the decision to write that vehicle off, it's, it's not a repair proposition. We're the organisation that steps in from the moment that they make that decision to the time that we return the money into their bank account and we handle all of the operations and logistics in between those, those two points. But quite clearly, uh, we have been operating a certain way for a long period of time and our business is, is very much starting to evolve. Uh, we've been very good at running these sort of events, uh, but clearly the world has changed, changed around us. The way customers want to buy and sell uh, has, has changed dramatically and this, this model is not really uh, part of our future going forward. So this is just a, a simple way of explaining uh, how our business has operated historically. Uh, it's a reasonably simple business in that we source product from vendors uh, and we find buyers to sell them, sell them to. Uh, and in the past we have typically just consigned that product, so the, the vendors give us, give us the product uh, on, on, to sell on their behalf. We processed it through one of our divisions and we ran a physical auction event to sell that product. Now, a physical auction event was very good at selling a large number of things very quickly to a very knowledgeable customer base. And because of, because of the nature of the way we were selling, we were essentially a wholesale, a wholesale market. We were, we were very good at attracting uh, dealers and, and car wreckers and recyclers and dismantlers and, and parts guys and things. Not the ideal way to sell to retail consumers. And so, consequently, we did start a finance company about six years ago and we've, we've done an okay job at that but, but huge potential in terms of opening up the ways that we sell to get to more of those retail consumers. And quite clearly the environments that we all operate in are changing uh, uh, almost on a weekly basis. I mean, the use of the internet is now pervasive, particularly in the, in the product set that we sell uh, we would find 95% of our customer base are researching online uh, before they buy and even using the internet now to transact as well. Uh, Trade Me are just such a dominant force in, in the markets that we operate in, particularly in used vehicles. They have a very, very strong position in terms of the online audience reach that they have. It is a, it is a pervasive place that all buyers uh, just about will use as a research tool and as a way to transact. So uh, that's that's something that's uh, changed a lot in the last five years for us. Uh, obviously, there is the continuing uh, adoption of smart devices to to access that information uh, and and transact. Uh, we also have a vehicle fleet in New Zealand uh, that is aging uh, quickly. There's quite a lot of press around the fact that. Uh, the sort of heyday of the used import markets created these, these sort of big um, peaks of, of older cars coming into New Zealand. So a lot of those cars are starting to get to the end, the end of their life now. So in New Zealand we have a vehicle fleet of around 3 million cars and a million of those cars are 16 years or older. 
So they're starting to get to the end of their economic life. Uh, great opportunity for us because we have a large number of established buyers who want that product, uh, but also it's going to create substantial demand for, for change out into new vehicles as well. And the last point is that those vendors that I showed you before on that slide of brands, uh, they are definitely pushing for more and more, uh, as you'd expect. Uh, we have typically sold their product to a middleman. So in the, in the case of lease plan, we would sell half their vehicles to car dealers. And they are very much of the mindset now that they want to get to their end user. If they feel like they're getting to that end user, they're getting more money for the cars that they're trying to sell. And, and that's what a, a huge part of our strategy is based on. So what are some of the things that we've uh, observed and learnt uh, over the last uh, particularly couple of years? Uh, the physical auction is, is, is getting more and more difficult to attract uh, end users to, or to, those re to get to those retail customers. <coughs> and if we look at the used vehicle market in particular, we would observe that less than 10% of the cars that are bought and sold in New Zealand are bought through a physical auction. Uh, the other thing that we've learned is that uh, an event-based physical style auction makes it very difficult to sell finance. By its nature, it is a high speed, uh, quite intimidating process. Uh, I mean, to give you an example, on Wednesday out at our Penrose branch, we would sell somewhere between 90 and 120 cars in less than two hours. Uh, so that process is all about speed uh, and, and efficiency. And to sell finance and insurance products in particular, you need time with the customers. Uh, to meet the vendor's expectations, we need to sell to more end users. Uh, so I talked about that before. Currently, we're selling around half of our vehicles to dealers. We get half to the end users, half to the dealers, but we really want to scale that to get to more end users. But to get to more end users, we need to provide better quality uh, and more information online for potential buyers. So we really need to lift our game in terms of how we are representing the things that we're selling online. And what we've also learned is that there are a large group of sellers and buyers for which speed and certainty of the transaction are really, really important. Not everyone wants to spend three and a half weeks selling their car on TradeMe uh, and having people come and visit them uh, at all hours or ringing them and saying they are coming to visit and not turning up. There are a big bunch of particularly sellers who just want to deal with someone they trust and deal and, and deal with it in a, in a no fuss, no hassle, no hassle way. So that leads us on to the opportunity, uh, and this is sizeable, uh, particularly if we get this right. So in New Zealand, around 1.3 million used vehicle transactions this year, so that's across cars, uh, damaged or, or uh, deregistered vehicles and, and trucks. 1.3 million this year, it will be higher again next year. And we currently hold uh, well less than 10% of that highly fragmented market. It is, it is a highly fragmented market. So it gives us an opportunity as a big player with a good brand to grab hold of this market. And essentially there's, there's two, two things for us. We want to grow that market share by sourcing and selling more vehicles. Uh, and we want to grow our finance business by writing more finance on the, on the deals that we're associated with. So we've developed a blueprint for growth. And essentially it's about more product, uh, multiple ways of sourcing product and multiple ways of selling product. But at its heart, uh, it's about creating more ways to attract more retail consumers and gives us more opportunity to sell the finance products. So on the left hand side there, uh, the shift being that we don't just <coughs> consign product anymore, we buy product straight off the vendors as well. Uh, and on the left hand side, quite clearly we are creating different ways of selling. So starting from the top, uh, the retail channel, Trade Me Auctions channel, our own online auctions, still some physical auction events and just brokering sales if we need to. The great thing about this blueprint for growth is it does become self-sustaining. Uh, and if I can just explain that quickly to you. Uh, 
what we're what we're what we're showing is that by creating more retail channels, it gives us more access to retail buyers. Uh, if we get access to more retail buyers and sell less to the dealers, we will sell things for higher prices, and that means we can attract more vendors at the at the sourcing end. So we get more retail buyers, better prices for the things we're selling, more vendors who want to sell through our process because we get better prices for them. So the whole thing kind of feeds on itself. And then on the way through, because we create more intimate sales processes by getting to those retail customers, we're, we're enabled to write more finance and create higher margins as, uh, per transaction. So that's the, the self-sustaining uh, element to that. Just quickly talking about uh, the different growth strategies for us. So in terms of buying more product, as I said before, what we've found with uh, Cash Now, which was a, a, a buying service that we launched about two and a half years ago, is that there are a large number of sellers in the market who want a quick, no fuss uh, sale for a fair price with a trusted party. We have a lot of sales history that enables us to be quite transparent with the people that we are buying things off to say, here is what we are selling these things for, here is what we can pay for it. And that process works, works extremely well. So we've got that trusted brand, uh, we're very protective of that brand, it has, it has great qualities and great characteristics. Uh, and we are doing a great job of attracting a large number of leads for us to buy, to buy vehicles directly off the public. We've also extended that cash now service to take advantage of this big ageing group of the, of the car population. So we have obviously established buyer relationships with all the dismantlers, wreckers, parts guys. So we've, we've got a great opportunity to take advantage of this million, 16 year plus cars sitting in the New Zealand vehicle fleet that will get to the end of their economic life in the next two to three years. So we are positioning ourselves very much for that opportunity now. And just to give you a sense for how, this, uh, how we are making progress here, we've bought 50% more cars this year than we did last year. So that's at the end of uh, September. So we are making good progress uh, in this area, but we think there's a long way to go. Uh, in terms of the, the second key area for us, it's about shifting sales. So shifting sales out of that wholesale physical auction channel and into these uh, retail channels, which, we cre which we've created. Uh, so the first one uh, is just a straight retail channel, so we call it buy now, where someone can choose from a selection of vehicles, uh, a vehicle, just negotiate a price, they can buy any time uh, anytime they like. Uh, and really it's just about providing a, mu a much more convenient way for buyers to uh, buy a used vehicle. And it enables us to, uh, to appeal to a far larger group of retail consumers than we have before. The real upside for us is creating that one-on-one -on -one transaction. So the opportunity for us to spend one-on-one -on -one time with that buyer, assessing their needs, talking through their options around finance, and, and our conversion rate on finance improves dramatically. Uh, the second area or retail channel that we've created is on, on Trade Me. So, we see Turners and TradeMe being a very, very powerful combination. And what we've proven is that our brand on their platform can uh, command a premium for a premium <coughs> price for product, and it's helping us attract new vendors. So we are regularly selling over a thousand items a week now on TradeMe, uh, right through our business. So from vehicles through to uh, just about anything that we would sell on behalf of a receiver or a liquidator. And here's just a, a quick example. So this truck here is part of a big sale we are running for Delta. Uh, Delta are a contracting uh, construction business owned by Dunedin City Council, which they're getting out of. Uh, we're running about $5 million worth of sales for them through our Trade Me store in Christchurch. So that, that's across trucks, vehicles, uh, diggers, earth moving equipment, just general con contracting plant and equipment. But this is a, this is a massive, channel for us uh, and in a massive proposition to our vendor base in terms of how we reach those retail consumers. 
Uh, and the last channel for us about attracting retail consumers is our, is our own website. So we've put a, a, a big investment into that this year. Uh, in April we launched a, a brand new website built from the ground up, total, totally new uh, technology platform, uh, which is optimised as you can see there for smart device use, so, so everything configures properly when you're accessing it via uh, tablets and smartphones. We've already seen significant growth in our traffic, uh, but this is very much about enabling future things to happen. So at the moment we're in the process of developing uh, an online tender system and an online auction system uh, that's, that's currently uh, in testing. Uh, but this platform provides us much more agility than we've ever had before. Uh, and that's really the key for us uh, moving forward. Uh, the last growth strategy I wanted to go into was around finance. So obviously by enabling those retail channels we get to more end users uh, but we get to sell them in, to them in a way which enables us to be much more successful at, at selling finance and insurance products. So it gives us that one-on-one -on -one time with the customers, with our finance specialists, we assess their needs, tailor the offering, build some rapport with those customers uh, and, and we're, enabled, we're able to do the deal. And what we've, uh, what we've learnt over the last year is that our attach rate of a finance sale doubles uh, when we sell cars through that buy now channel. So on the auctions, uh, physical auctions channel we tend to attach about 1 in 10, uh, one in 10 sales to, to a finance contract. Uh, through buy now we double that straight away without a huge amount of effort to be honest. So we believe there's, there's plenty of room to grow there. Uh, as I said before we we have a recourse lending model with MTF. Uh, that, that essentially means we take the risk on the loan, we decide who we lend to, uh, but we enjoy the, the profits uh, associated with that risk. And we are, we are doing a good job of lending to the right people. Uh, we run a very, very low arrears uh, through our finance book. So in terms of uh, our progress, that's, uh, that's obviously the, the plan. Uh, how have we gone against that plan? So just to, just to remind you, very much about transitioning to that online marketing operation and really setting up those channels to get to those retail consumers, uh, but very much supported by our bricks and mortar operation. So we have a 10 branch network right throughout the country. That is still a key part of our proposition back to that vendor base. We are their infrastructure, we are their, you know, their buildings, their people, their fences, their car parks, their systems. So we, we want to be in places that are close to their customers. Uh, so that bricks and mortar uh, footprint is still very important to us. Uh, in terms of the investments that we've made to establish this platform for growth, uh, largely uh, the investments have been made, which is, which is good news. Uh, we've launched a new online platform this year. Uh, we've implemented a new CRM system to enable us to do much more uh, mining uh, and, and uh, acquiring of new customers using, using data. Uh, we've launched a brand new business operating system again about setting the platform for growth in this company, creating agility and the great news about that was we've done all of that without any negative impact on our customer base at all. So these are, these are substantial projects for an organisation of our size. Uh, we are really investing in our people so we're we are putting a lot of time and energy into lifting the sales and service capability within our, within our organisation and that's going, going really well. Uh, we've bought our web development in-house, which again just is part of that whole agility, uh, agility picture. And we're funding all of this investment out of cash flow. We, 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 we do that, um, we don't borrow any money, we're, we're investing that all out of cash flow. Uh, just quickly on the on the financial performance of the organisation, uh, we've we've made reasonable progress over the last three years, but we are now well positioned for good growth. Uh, so that at the end of this year, we expect uh, FY13 net profit to be around 10% ahead of last year, which off the off the back of where we were at the beginning of the year is a is a really great result and is giving us the confidence that. The strategy is starting to pay off. 
We have a high dividend payout ratio. Uh, as you can see there, a strong history of, of good dividends. And last year we paid out 90, 97% of that profit to our shareholders. So good, good plan. We've, we've made the investments we need to make. Uh, we're starting to see that shift into those retail channels and we're starting to see the benefits of that uh, around the business. At the beginning of the year, well actually it was around March, uh, we lost one of our bigger customers, IAG Insurance, and at the time we'd signalled to the market that that was going to have an annual impact of around 15% negative impact on our, on our bottom line. So obviously at that time our focus and energy was very much around ensuring that we secured the rest of those, those big customers. Uh, and we put a lot of effort into, into bridging the gap, if you like. So we knew that we were going to have this revenue gap from losing IAG, but we, we thought we really went at this new strategy with vigour uh, and, and it's starting to pay off. So we're, we're buying a lot more units through that Cash Now service. We've extended uh, the Cash Now offering to take advantage of this end of life vehicle opportunity that we see. Uh, we've made the right investments from a, from a web and a technology point of view to give us that agility to react. Uh, we've done great work around implementing this multi-channel sales uh, model. So we've gone hard at the Buy Now channel, we've set up the relationships with Trade Me and are now going uh, really hard at that and we're well positioned to start doing things via, via our own uh, web platform as well. Uh, so we're in, we're in good shape. Uh, in terms of the investment case, uh, as, a, as, a, as a wrap up, I think we've got an enormous opportunity to grow this business. Uh, we've made great progress very quickly this year with a, with a change in direction uh, and, a, and a clear plan about where we see the opportunities. Uh, we've put the investment in place uh, and that's, that's strengthened everything across the business. Uh, we are making good progress around shifting the people in our business from a very much a wholesale and trade based business into a retail consumer faced business uh, and that's going really well. I think we're an organisation that's in, in excellent health from a financial and from a people perspective. Uh, we've got a great brand, a very well recognised brand in this country, stands for, for good things and we've got a good plan to leverage off that brand. We pay uh, excellent dividends and there is a genuine opportunity uh, to grow this business significantly over the next three to four years. So thanks for, thanks for listening. Uh, if, you know, there's obviously time for questions now but if anyone has any other questions later please feel free to call uh, Aaron or I on those, so that's our, those are our numbers there. Thanks very much.